Hi guys, welcome back again. So in our last video, we talked about William Jennings Bryan and the populist movement. And we've been focusing on kind of homesteaders and the, the buildup of the West, but really all of this is kind of predicated, it's all really built up on an event known as the Industrial Revolution. And in this case, it's actually the second Industrial Revolution. It happens in the late 1800s, and that's kind of the theme of today's video. We're really gonna talk about these this wealth of it, this, this a massive amount of inventions that come along and these famous folks who you're going to end up knowing their names already most likely who really begin to kind of shape America and so for your notes you need to have this titled as the Industrial Revolution Part 2 and some things to make sure that you know about so in the late 1800s industry was kind of revolutionized for a second time creating something called this the second Industrial Revolution and after the Civil War the U.S. became one of the leading industrial powers in the world. And business, such as steel, railroads, they grew by leaps and bounds. Now, business tycoons, those people who are really wealthy and are really good at business themselves, um, notably the railroad barons, these people will rise to prominence uh, in the railroad industry. Um, they'll help it flourish, and life uh, will change drastically for people of every income level. So it's not just those at the top who make the most money, but actually people in the middle class will grow faster than it ever had grown before, and the lower class will even see some social improvements in their life. So it's kind of a chain reaction to all of this industrial growth. You get a lot of new inventions. Um, this industrial growth, especially in the railroad sector, really fueled a demand for new technology. And each new invention led to an, to others. So if one invention was created, it would most likely help kind of found another one. Um, many Americans' uh, most significant technological and development came about in the late 19th century. Um, some of those in particular are the Singer sewing machine by Isaac Singer. Um, he improved on the original 19, or 1845 sewing machine designed. A design and enabled the garment industry to begin to replace at-home clothing construction. Before everything that you wanted was made at home, most likely. If you wanted a shirt, you had to go buy the garment and the clothes itself and, and hand sew everything. Singer really changes all of that with his sewing machine. You also get the first transatlantic telegraph wire, which is put into place at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, and it connects Europe and the Americas for the first time. In 1867, the first commercial success, commercially successful typewriter was invented by Christopher Scholes, uh, Carlos Glidden, and Samuel Sowell. And in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell created the first telephone and started the Bell Telephone Company, uh, launched and launching the telecom industry. Today, AT&T is kind of the, the, the natural evolution of Bell Telephone. Um, it, it will eventually kind of split and divide into, into different, uh, into different corporations, but AT&T is kind of the founder of Bell Telephone. Also, you get this gentleman to the right, 1876, Thomas Edison, who became known as kind of the Wizard of Menlo Park. Um, he opened a lab in Menlo Park, New Jersey, and went on to patent more than a thousand inventions. In 1879, he invented the first electric light bulb, which really revolutionized the way people had lived. Previously, you lit your entire existence at night by lamp oil or candlelight. For the first time, you can have electric light, which is more safer because you have less fire risk and also is cheaper because you, for the first time, you don't have to, we're not having to go out and actively hunt down whale blubber to make this lamp oil. It's not just all lights and, and Singer sewing machines that are created. You get a lot of technology that really has a major impact on our lives today. In 1886, George Westinghouse founded the Westinghouse Electric Company, which really expanded the grid for creation for for uh, Edison's creations, like the light bulb. In 1888, the adding machine, an early calculator, was patented by William Seward Burroughs. Um, it facilitated business transactions, and at the same time, the Kodak Camera Company uh, bought snap uh, brought snapshot photography to the mainstream thanks to George Eastman. Kodak is still around today. In 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright made the first airplane flight in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December 17th. And this, while North Carolina was the first place to see flight, the Wright brothers themselves were from Ohio and built kind of all of their, their, their test uh, uh, planes in Ohio itself. So Ohio has kind of the credit of being first in flight. Um, 
1908, probably the single invention that, that really revolutionized the America at this time um, is Henry Ford's Model T. Um, created, uh, he created his in innovation, in his innovative assembly line, sorry, um, so that it could churn out cars faster and more affordable. Henry Ford doesn't create the car, but he does create the assembly line idea. And that idea revolutionizes the industrial industry. For the first time, instead of one person creating an entire car, Maybe you stand on an assembly line and your job is to take your wrench and tighten one bolt for every single car that comes through. It moves cars through much faster and it also helps to, to uh, keep the process standardized. One of the biggest pro uh, process changes is in, occurs in 1855. The British made steel production um, less difficult and less expensive, making railroad construction easier and skyscrapers possible with something known as the Bessemer process. Um, you also, with all these new inventions, came a higher uh, demand for fuel. After Edwin L. Drake's in 1859 discovers uh, crude oil, which could be turned into kerosene for lighting lamps and used as fuel, uh, underground in Pennsylvania, the petroleum industry began to skyrocket. And so that's it. Um, we're going to talk a lot more about these inventions and how they really revolutionized America, particularly Henry Ford and his assembly line. But for today, I want you to remember that with all of this industrial growth, with the expansion of the railroads, with the expansion of, of po the population through immigration, you also get all of this change in the industrial sector, all of these new inventions, things that we still use today, sewing machines, airplanes, cars. You, the light bulb for crying out loud. I mean, you, I'm sitting under electric light right now. And so all of these changes really begin to impact America and its ability to not only grow in its own country, but grow around the world. And this doesn't happen necessarily in a vacuum. Remember, these inventions are taking place in other countries as well. This is not the only place that is creating these, these things or using this new technology. But it, but America really becomes kind of a center, a, a hub for innovation at this time. Tomorrow we were going to talk, we're going to talk much more about the corporation and trusts and how, what happens when that idea of laissez-faire economics that we learned about, about Adam Smith, what happens when it really kind of goes unchecked? For today though, please try to come up with two essay questions from this, from these notes and put them at the bottom of your note page. Also make sure that you have any questions or comments you might have about this material in the column to the left of, on your in your in your uh, 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 sidebar there. Um, we'll talk much more about this tomorrow in class. If you have any other questions, please make sure you you keep those in your head. And until then, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.